is the Caps Lock Magazine team here. What we're doing in this right moment is going to the Ukrainian uh, Polish border in order to have a original objective uh, point of view on the situation that is going on over there. So, Marta, you are from Ukraine, right? Yeah, I'm from Lviv. How long have you been here in Poland so uh, far? So, I have been studying here five, for five years. And, you know, I was thinking to go back to Ukraine. But right now it's, I think, too complicated to go home. <laughs> from the mother side, they are living in Odessa. This is very close to Russian. And they cannot leave this uh, place. Mm -hmm. I don't know, and uh, I know why. Mm -hmm. And my friend uh, in Kyiv, they left there, and they just uh, moving to Lviv, and everybody moving to Lviv, Uzhorod, uh, this uh, city that is very close to Poland. One friend staying with guns, another just helping, and uh, you know, everybody engaged in the, this. My sister, at the beginning of this war, they, she wrote to me at 5 a.m. Uh, Marta, everything is bad, we are bombarded by, by Russian and uh, I know that uh, Putin is uh, every time telling their lies and I just cannot understand how they come to us looking at our eyes and just killing our kids, uh, our women. No, uh, yesterday they attacked uh, Mariupol. here in the Rdzezhov station. It's one of the main stations where refugees are, are coming from Medica, uh, which is one of the uh, most important cities uh, in terms of uh, welcoming the refugees. Inside here, there's a gathering point. They're giving uh, medical aids, foods, and other stuff. Here, you can see animals, people, uh, which are running uh, from the war. How did you name it? He's uh, Piersik, it's Pich. Pich, <laughs> Piersky. Originally, we are from Kharkiv. We had been during five days in basement, we live, under attack, under bombs. And it's very scary because you can listen when uh, uh, airplane and you can, uh, you can listen, uh, hear the sound. And you don't know in, in which house the bomb will come. So after this aviation attack, we decided to leave Kharkiv. Three days we went to, from Kharkiv to Lviv because uh, there are very busy traffic, a lot of cars, a lot of posts, and uh, they uh, check documents. So we had three, three suitcases and that's all, and cat. And this cat, we also, he was homeless, and we took it from uh, street. And now, again, <laughs> we are without house. What did you do? Uh, during while you were in the basement, you know, after when we were here, we have known all our neighbors because do this we don't have this opportunity, and we were very friendly. We uh, we cook borscht, it's our national dish, if you know. The children, it was like a camp. They are together. They play cards, some uh, games, and also there were a lot of. Uh, empty walls and they were drawing on these walls. So it was, you know, it was a uh, good opportunity to, to get together and to know each other. She wasn't very afraid, but uh, they were in basement. <laughs> they were in basement, some she, children, they were uh, five, six years, and they were afraid of, and they scared, and they crying if they hear these uh, bombs. What is the thing that you could not leave behind? Oh, my daughter, she has Ukrainian flag. <laughs> <laughs> but we only clothes and cat, and that's all. What? Yes. No. <laughs> he was with us in Turkey. <laughs> so, but I don't know. Only clothes <laughs> and cat. We, we ask you, one word that you have for Putin and one word that you have for Zelensky. 
you know, uh, from Zelensky, he's a hero, and he become a hero for for our country. But of course, Putin, uh, no, it's Hitler. Putin, Putin. You know, it's, yeah. Now it's we uh, relax, more relax after five or six days. I see you're smiling, and that <laughs> yeah. cheers me up. But it's you know, it's like a new opportunity, maybe to start new life. Who knows? <laughs> Hello guys, uh, we are now headed to Kroshenko. It's morning here, it's very cold. We are about to go to this very important point of passage of the different refugees. It's the second most important point after Medica um, and it's struggling a little bit more. So that's why we're going there instead of Medica, uh, which uh, has been uh, said to us to be very organized. All the cars that you see here, some are pro refugees, some are press. The police told us to stop here, so from this point on we will walk by feet. And uh, we'll see what uh, the border awaits us from. Sorry, Minister, do you speak English? No. No. Uh, do you know where are you going? Uh... Uh, destination, like the bus? Yes, yes, yes. Gdiga. Okay, okay. Are you okay? Yes. Okay. So and so. What what is the thing that you brought with you? What well, what is inside the bag? Uh, his conserve. Uh, uh, no, something to eat. Okay. Something to feed him. Okay. Because we thought that we sh should go uh, by walk. By walk, yes. Okay. Okay. But we had uh, a car. Okay. Three block posts. Yes. Ah. Three block posts by Russian soldiers. Ah. Okay. Uh, the the Indians don't speak Russian. No, I don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, th thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> What are you doing here? Are you uh, helping with the we, food? Uh, yes, we have food, uh, we have apple for our friends from Ukraine. Yeah. Our local uh, government has uh, a partnership with Ukrainian uh, people okay. and we drive here and uh, give him uh, wh what we have. Okay, that's great. And mm -hmm. how are things going? Uh, uh, are they going uh, good? Are they going no, bad? No, bad, because mm. uh, in, in Poland uh, we need a passport to drive mm. uh, for a board, uh, but uh, you or uh, people from Deutschland yeah. or uh, another uh, European country uh, can uh, sew uh, a uh, cart yeah. and, and drive and we uh, stay here. What is the, the thing uh, that the people in Ukraine need the, the most right now? Uh, the most medicaments, okay. uh, food, okay. uh, uh, and uh, artillery, guns. You know, our history, Poland and Ukraine, is very uh, hard because we have a lot of... Uh, fight? Fight, yes. Uh, but now uh, we are together. Poland and Ukraine. We are like brother. Uh, okay, we have a car, so okay. we repack this uh, packet. Okay, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Our mission is to actually provide uh, hot cooked meals. We, we have so little control over what's happening there, and we all we try to do is communicate as much as we can to know like what the needs are, how many people will be crossing, but it gets a little difficult because there's uh, we have law enforcement, and also border patrol and also local organizations and everybody's kind of uh, trying to work together. And so um, the best thing is just resources. We have almost two million people have crossed so far. It's going to be millions more and these projects will probably be going for months coming. So. Yes. Did you also meet guys from Russia coming from the border or no any Russian at all? Uh, I think maybe like five people and right now I am trying to help a woman with a small Russian child. Oh. She was just as scared as everyone. I'm trying to help her as much as I can. 
uh, just you know the same as everyone from what I see. I, yeah, I think we and everyone know that most Russian people are just as against this as yeah, we are. And good. so that's something to really keep in mind is to not demonize Russia, but just actually just the people who are actually making it happen. Yeah, yeah. we agree on that. the border with Medica and uh, what we are about to do is uh, uh, suddenly understand how to get the closest to the border we can. Okay. We can go by car. Okay. Medica border, it's the major point where the refugees are flowing from Ukraine to Poland. We left Kiev on the second day of war, so we stayed about, I think, like 26 hours in Kiev. And all these 26 hours, they were a nightmare. So, like, none of us could sleep. Uh, we were just scared. We didn't know what to do. We just, what, we were watching news, and all the like some roads around Kiev were blocked. Some roads were destroyed. So it was um, a very quick decision that we took. We got like dressed and ready in, I think, 10 minutes and we left to southwest from Kiev. We heard quite a lot of helicopters. Uh, we saw the military planes just above us. So like I saw one super closely, probably like, I don't know, it feels like 10 meters. Right now what you see is a human catastrophe that is there. I was just, I just came back from Ukraine and what I found out was that in the last uh, three days, they have had like 180,000 people walk by through this corridor. So we go there and then there's a request from them for food. We cook over here or, you know, you assemble it from the people around and then take carts to get the food down there. We go in like at least three times a day and distribute. There's a huge queue of people standing behind. And these people are coming from different places. They're walking for like 16 to 17 hours a day. We are coming from Kharkiv and now we are trying to find a place in any other country. For now we don't know yet where we are going to stay. Um, what else? I'm from the city where the war is like spreading and it's very dangerous to stay right there. Well, we woke up at 5 o'clock in the morning okay. while uh, we were sleeping and we heard these shots so we were really scared and we uh, ran uh, to the basement with my little daughter and we were hiding there. Uh, for the next three days we were staying uh, in the basement. Sometimes we went up to our house to, to eat, to wash our hands maybe. Okay. But once we had no uh, electricity, it was cut because of the bombs, of the shots, uh, it was destroyed. And all of my friends ran away from Kharkiv, they escaped. And we decided that we never want to live in an occupied territory, so that's why we decided to, uh, to head to Lviv, which feels safer because it's closer to Poland. People are hosting each other, so you're just, you know, uh, writing on Instagram or uh, like on Telegram group chats that, hey guys, like I'm going to Lviv, does anyone have accommodation? This is the only way how you're looking for accommodation right now. So I left my boyfriend there in Lviv. It was like a very difficult decision for me because we don't know for how long this separation will last. And this is like the most difficult part. We assume that they will open up the border for male uh, like citizens as well at some point, because you don't need all the main uh, citizens for the army, right? Like it will be like 20 million people. You don't need as many. So it's a logical decision that some will stay and some will like fight. Others will leave 
will work, earn money to send back to the country, because what we expect is that there will be like a huge uh, humanitarian, uh, like just disaster there. Thanks God, uh, my husband helped us. He drove us here uh, so that we could uh, cross the border. There are no safe places, even though at some places there are no shots, it's for now. Men in Ukraine from 18 till 60 cannot leave the country according to the law in such situation. Okay, and what do you think about these laws? And actually, of course, I want my husband to be with me. I didn't want to come here without him. But then I was thinking that uh, I cannot do this to my daughter. Uh, she is very little. She deserves to have a life. Of course, I want him to come back here. And all the men, if they want to escape. Okay. <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> okay. It's their choice. Okay. We have enough of um, men in our country who wants to fight, who are ready to protect our homes, and uh, there are so many, I don't know, volunteers that we don't need uh, our men to stay there. But do you uh, know like what is the kind of thing that is the most needed at the moment? So hot coffee, hot tea, hot chocolate. They need something to keep the bodies warm. Onion. Onion. This is brown onion. We will be making masala. This is... It's good. It's good. Ah. Wow. I have only diapers, my uh, daughter's uh, food, and everything I'm wearing right now. Okay, and is there... No, no gold, no money. I left everything there. My husband uh, took something, but I didn't take. No, no clothes, no cool bags, brand bags. I could sell them, but I was thinking about my life. And our motto is recognize the human race as one. Uh, and we have people, volunteers coming in from all over. My friend here is from, uh, he's, an, he's an advocate, uh, Jesse. He's Hello. from uh, San Diego. Uh, the others from Spain. We actually got this tent where they can come and feel warm. We'll have blowers hit, hot air that blows in inside, and they'll keep them safe. You know, we need all your support, all your help. Come and volunteers who want to work with us, feel free to join us. And now I'm uh, doing my own startup. So quite an unfortunate time to be unemployed. <laughs> I, I think that for me it will be much easier to find a job in Amsterdam than anywhere else in Europe. But for my mom, for example, she's an actress here in Ukraine. So her main tool is language. She will not be able to be an actress in any different language uh, other than uh, like Ukrainian or Russian. <laughs> Do you have Russian friends or yeah. anything like that? Okay. I have uh, like I have one Russian friend, but now he tells me that he's Ukrainian. <laughs> he's not supporting Putin. He's not supporting uh, like all the politics. Like his parents moved from Russia as well, but I know that he's one of not that many. I'm not uh, ashamed to say that we are crying every day. It's been 16 days now. Every day is a new depression uh, wave for us. Their thoughts that, okay, I left my plants in my flat and my plants will die. Uh, my mom, for example, she even left a bowl with soup on the oven. She has like one backpack uh, with her things. So, it's incredibly emotional. No one knows what we will do. Uh, what's the thing that you could not absolutely leave behind for him? Uh, so uh, it's, uh, it's an emotional, again, item, but I have one icon that my father gave to me when I was uh, like only born. It's quite, quite a big one. So I was thinking, okay, do I need to use uh, that much space? But I decided to take it, yeah. I didn't take uh, a charger for my electric toothbrush, for example. And do you have already some countries in mind where, where you might move? Um, I don't know, maybe uh, Germany, maybe. One word for Putin and one word for Zelensky. <laughs> okay, um, may I say something before that? Uh, I'm not a very political person and till this moment I was like neutral. But after this happened and after I was so scared for my daughter, I said that I really I was started thinking that I wish Putin to die.
I I've never uh, thought anything like that in my life. I've never wished it for any person in this life. I've never wished them to be dead. But right now, I wish this motherfucker, I'm sorry, to be dead. For Zelensky, okay, I hope he will help us. That's all I can say. Okay. Okay, okay that's all, yeah? That's all. Thank you. <laughs> that's For Putin, I hope you die in pain very, very soon. For Zelensky, um, courage. <laughs>